My name is Stephen Palacini. I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant, and I'm here to show you three ways that you can start searching for LMIA jobs in Canada, or whether you are on a work permit or visiting Canada or even intending to come to Canada and you need to apply for a closed work permit to work with an employer extending your status in Canada, where can you find LMIA jobs? Well, there's basically three tips here. The Job Bank of Canada, uh, the Temporary Foreign Workers uh, Approved Employers list, and three, I would say Indeed, can show you at least the jobs they're hiring for. Uh, and then if you have a good relationship with that employer, you can convince them to go through the LMIA process for you. And I did another video in my YouTube channel on how to pitch your employer for an LMIA. Rather than saying, I need you to go through this complex process, it's called an LMIA, it's gonna cost you $1,000. I usually find it better to say, sponsor me for this job opportunity. There's, it's basically job sponsorship is what it is. And I'm not gonna go into too much details on what an LMIA is, I've done that in another video. I will do that on other videos in the future. This one is basically just gonna be how can you search? What are you looking for? Uh, what are some resources that you can go to? So number one, I'd say is the job bank because anybody that has to get an LMIA approved, which means any employer that is actively hiring foreign workers has to advertise the job on job bank. Okay. So job bank is a government job search board that actually nobody really gets hired from in terms of if you're not familiar with the temporary foreign worker program you're likely not advertising on job bank you're advertising on something like indeed you only advertise on job bank when you have to get an you must advertise on job bank when you're applying for an lmia so i'm going to show you let's say you're in the market for being a healthcare assistant. Like that is your, your occupation code. That's what you have experience in because you can't just apply for any job. Well, you can apply for any job, but you can't just apply for a work permit on the basis of a job that you have no experience in, or you don't have the credentials to do that said job. So if you were a nurse aide back home and now you're applying to become an accountant or applying for a work permit with an accounting LMIA, it would be very challenging to get it approved because the officer wouldn't be convinced that you can actually do the work of an accountant. You don't have a CPA designation. You don't have a bachelor degree in accounting. So where can you find those requirements? That's on looking up your NOC through ESDC or the job bank. So um, I guess I can quickly show you guys. We've got NOC code here. Uh, this is the national occupation classification. So you're a health care assistant, and this is not the best search engine. So if you put actually no space in between healthcare assistant, you it won't pop up. So you have to put a space. Uh, this is, you know, you read the lead statement. That's called the lead statement. And these are example titles. So what they go by, you can check out the full index of titles. And then this is the main duties. So if you've done this work in the past, either in Canada or in your home country, and you meet these requirements, verify the employment requirements, and if it's education, it should be verified by a WES, um, and you have the English language skills or French language skills required to participate in that position, then uh, the work permit should be approved as long as you have the LMIA to support it or an LMIA exempt basis. But like I said, I'm just focusing on LMIAs right now because we know how important they are uh, to either extend your status in Canada, get a work permit in Canada. So let's say you are a nurse aide, an orderly or patient service associates, uh, patient care aide. This is the NOC code, okay? The skill level is a tier three. So skills go zero, one, two, three. Those are skilled occupations and skilled occupations qualify for express entry. Okay. And, uh, and then there's tier four and five, which do not qualify for express entry. Uh, but they do now qualify in some cases for a, um, a spousal open work permit. Okay. But that's a side note. That's where you can find the skill code. Okay. Or the tier level. 
Then we go to job bank and you say, okay, I'm just going to search the number and I'd like to settle in Ontario, province of Ontario. There's 93 results right now. And I looked at these obviously before doing this video just to kind of go through it, but they have to advertise on the job bank if they're aiming for an LMIA, which means these employers may already uh, have somebody lined up. So you can try applying, they might not get back, but if they do not have somebody yet, then you can. Click show how to apply, they give you this email here, recruitment reliner, so this is obviously a recruitment company working on behalf of uh, like a, maybe a staffing company. Uh, nurse aid in Belleville for this company is required. Uh, show how to apply. They want mmrresidence.hiring at gmail.com. Well, what business is it? Where's the business? This is it, Ontario Inc. You can go look at this company and see if it's a, a valid, genuine employer. Uh, personal care attendant medical, aid healthcare. Let's look at Hamilton Health Services. This is not a job bank listing, okay? This is just, it came from the title posted on Monster. So they haven't necessarily advertised for it on the job bank specifically, which means they might not be in the process of going through an LMIA, but you may be able to apply on Monster. And if they then want to talk about the LMIA process, then they would have to advertise on the job bank. So what about this one? Personal support aid, medical, uh, five vacancies. They're hiring for five. It's GEM healthcare group. And they say, uh, you only apply to this job if you're a Canadian citizen, a permanent or temporary resident of Canada. You have a valid Canadian work permit. So they, they want you to be authorized to apply, but this is the person's email, Donna Pinkham at gemhc.com. So they can put in different specifications on what they what they're asking for. See, other candidates with or without a valid Canadian work permit. The one prior to that said that you have to be on at least a work permit. So this one would be willing to accept people technically from overseas because they're without a valid Canadian work permit. They might not even be in Canada. So this place is probably doing LMIAs or willing to go for, through the LMIA process. It was posted on January 29th. They'll need to advertise for 28 days. So likely this ad will um, not expire, but after the 28th, they will be submitting uh, an LMIA application to Service Canada, you would anticipate. So maybe you want to email them, try and check it out. If you can go visit the place of business or call, try and get a hold of the recruiter, adairplace.home. So it's in Tamworth, Ontario. You might want to say Adair Place, Tamworth. We know that, uh, okay, Adair Place, retirement home in Tamworth. There's their phone number. You might want to give them a call and say, I saw your job. Would you be interested in supporting me for an LMIA? Would you be interested? In, I, I'd like to apply, I have my resume. So that's what you can do on Job Bank. These, everybody who's advertising on Job Bank, I should say, at least if, if an employer is applying for an LMIA, they must most definitely be on Job Bank. There's very few exemptions for that, okay? So that'll give you a good idea of who right now is in the process of wanting, wanting to apply for an LMIA. And they do it for, they advertise for 28 days. That's the period, the minimum period. Then they have to keep it running while they apply to Service Canada. But what you also want to consider is that they can apply sometimes, in many cases, for an unnamed LMIA, which means they don't necessarily have the foreign worker lined up yet. They've advertised. Then they go to Service Canada, they have applied. Service Canada says, do you have anybody foreign that's going to work for you today? They say, no, we don't. So we need an unnamed LMIA. And once we find and recruit that person, we'll, they call Service Canada, email Service Canada, let them know, hey, this is the foreign worker we're hiring. So don't be discouraged if, you know, you think I, I missed that opportunity. They've already lined somebody up. That's not always the case. They they may have already lined somebody up and then that's why they're going through the LMIA process. Uh, but that's not always the case. So you can try. Plus, you know that these employers, 
there's a very good chance that they're open to doing an LMIA. And some of them have more than one uh, vacancy, right? So this is what I would recommend. And this is how you can get their contact information, how you can apply, how you can then find them. You The easiest way is just put in the not code that you qualify for, okay? So that's number one. That's the job bank. These people are, the majority of them, uh, are, are most definitely going for LMIAs. If they have this little Canadian flag, they are advertising on the job bank. Number two, another alternative option you can do is go to Service Canada and uh, Temporary Foreign Worker, I know I'm spelling it all wrong, uh, approved LMIA. It's on open.canada.ca. So it's a, it's, it's available data and you can see, we scroll all the way down to the most recent uh, available data, which is 2023 Q3 employers who are issued a positive labor market impact assessment. There's an English and then there's a French data set. So I'm gonna download and look at the English data set. And okay, it's downloading. These are Q3 positive LMIAs. Here we are. So in the third quarter of 2022, and they did just update the NOC codes, the tier codes, they used to be uh, four digits, now they're five. So let's see if they've updated them here. No, these are the four digits, okay? So anyways, that's, it's not disappointing. We can get around that. So what you do is you go to the back to the NOC classification, NOC code, and 2020, 2016, healthcare assistant. Assistant. See, I told you the, the search functionality is not too great. So this is the same one, nurse aides, orderlies, and patient service associates. Okay, that was a NOC C which was an unskilled occupation. Now it is a, now it is a skilled occupation. So let's find, and, and it's basically yeah, the exact same thing. And then they talk about the exclusions. So licensed practical nurses are excluded. Other assisting occupations, that would be something different. Let's see what other assisting occupations would be. This is the entire hierarchy and structure. Okay. So, Three, one, four, three. Now let's sort this. These are all the LMIs that were approved, okay? And in this column is the employer. This column is the program stream. This is the province and territory. So let's sort this uh, by knock. There we go. And it was three, what was it again? Nurse aides and orderlies. These are all the people that have approved nurse aides and orderlies, okay? These are all the employers that have, that got approved LMIAs in 20, Q3 of 2022. And Qualicum Quality Health Services, Bell Care Limited, all these people got an LMIA for this not code. Somebody is likely working in that position on that LMIA. There's also a good chance that, that person was fired and they want to maybe get another LMIA. Uh, there is also a good chance that uh, if you reach out to them, they could say, yeah, you know what? We're really satisfied with the foreign worker we hired at Q3 2022 and we'd love to do another LMIA. So these are basically, I would say, LMIA positive, LMIA friendly employers. So you can then do a Google search on these companies and find their contact information, see if they're hiring. That's point number two, okay? And third and final would be to check out job boards like indeed.ca and you would search for uh, nurse uh, health care aid, and this is in Calgary, but you would go to, let's say Toronto, 
find jobs. So right now there's, yeah, 78 jobs in Toronto. So if you saw in the job bank, there was 93 uh, in in the entire uh, province of Ontario. If I type on Indeed, there's 472. So assuming that everybody who's advertising on the job bank is looking for foreign workers is um, an LMIA positive employer doesn't mean they only hire foreign workers. Of course, they are going through the process to try and find Canadian citizens or permanent residents first. But if 93 are on the job bank and 472 are on Indeed, that means you could assume that roughly one in five employers or four out of five are not exploring the, uh, are not using the LMIA process right now. So you could reach out to these and when you find someone that says urgently hiring, I mean, you could call them and say, how have, how has the hiring process been? You can apply if they are, I would say really, um, desperate, then they might want to go through the LMIA process. And I did another YouTube video on how you can kind of pitch that to your employer by using terms like it's called a job sponsorship. It really is a pretty fast approval process. If you're already in Canada, you can start working for them literally the next day by going, getting an appointment and flag pulling at the border in the worst case scenario, or in the best case you apply online, but you're probably gonna be waiting seven months to get a change of status to your work conditions. So that's why, uh, you know, it, it, it's important to get started ahead of time on this. One other thing, uh, thing that I've noticed is whenever you see all lowercase, it tends to be posted on the job bank. That's just something I know. Um, see, it came from Indeed. It's low. Healthcare assistant. It's all lowercase. When it says something like healthcare assistant and it's sentence case, right? Or sorry, um, I don't know what you would call that. Maybe sentence case. Uh, you have, they're not on the job bank necessarily. This was pulled straight from job bank. Boom, done, right? So it's already on the job bank. And then if you emailed the email on the job bank and it didn't work, then okay, apply. And it's driving you to the job bank. This is, again, how they want you to apply, okay? So this is where you'll find everything that you need to do. And then because most Canadian companies don't use like not codes, uh, you only use not codes when you're trying to hire somebody for immigration or get an LMIA. You search for the not code and you can see it. nothing really populates, unlike the job bank, because the job bank, you have to indicate the not code. So I hope that was pretty useful uh, to show you, number one, basically which employers are getting LMIAs at the moment and how to find them their contact information, do a Google search, uh, reach out to the recruiters. Number two, looking at the previous list of LMIA employers uh, using the spreadsheet on open.canada.com or .ca, .gc.ca of approved employers. So the reason that's also important is because uh, LMIAs are valid for a period of 18 months right now. It used to only be six months, but because of the labor shortage, they're valid for 18 months. So they might have gotten one approved in Q3 of 2022, and they still might not even have the worker to have filled that position. They might not have found the right applicant. So that you could go all the way back until mid 2021 then, uh, because it's, you know, we're just starting 2023 right now. You could go 18 months back and they might still have that LMIA valid or that worker might have left. And then they would have to, yeah, apply for a new LMIA, but they've gone through the process. They've proven that their business is operational, providing a good or service. They have a good track record with Service Canada. What and, and they and they know the process isn't that challenging. So they may actually want to then go forward with you. But in closing, the most important thing when when searching for an LMI supported job offer is that the employer is on board. Uh, the employer needs to know what it entails, the LMIA process, that it's actually not that challenging, that over 100,000 LMIAs are issued every year or roughly in that ballpark, and something like 96% of LMIAs are approved because on that website, they have 
that were issued a positive labor market impact assessment, but they also have applications that were um, issued a negative labor market impact assessment. So employers that were refused. And I did the comparison uh, on my other video showing that it's actually roughly like five or four percent that actually get refused. So it, it's not a very, it, it's a lengthy, arduous process with, uh, you know, some technicalities to it, but it's totally worth it if you, if you need to, if you need to keep somebody on a closed work permit, you need to extend their status in Canada. It's a requirement. You have to go through the LMIA process. And yeah, I want them to simplify it. I want them to make the process more fair, but that's hopefully coming in the pipeline. So that's how you can start your journey to finding an LMIA supported job in Canada. I'd also like to say finally, and most importantly, the LMIA is a government document. It is basically an official, an official letter of employment in, in a simplest term. It is saying there will be no harm done to the Canadian labor market by hiring this foreign worker. It's not going to take jobs from Canadians. It has a net positive benefit or neutral benefit. And this employer can apply uh, to hire a foreign worker. That being said, because it functions like a job offer, no consultant, no lawyer, and no employer can charge you for an LMIA. They can never charge you for an LMIA. That is illegal, it is fraud, and it is, in fact, it's bribery is what it is. So this is, this is a common practice. If your employer asks you for money, if your consultant is trying to charge you for the LMIA, or if a lawyer is trying to charge you for the LMIA, that is, that is illegal, that's wrong. You don't have to pay when you're offered a genuine job, okay? Yes, you can pay to have a consultant or a lawyer to help you process the work permit, uh, but you should not be paying anything to your employer or your consultant or lawyer for the LMIA.